Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be sort of an updated perfume collection, but not really a full, full collection. I do have a lot more perfumes than the ones I'm gonna be sharing in today's video, but this is what I consider to be sort of my quote unquote personal collection. And by that I mean I usually take perfumes that I haven't been reaching for or there's a note in them that is bothering me or something and I put them aside. I don't like to have all of the perfumes I actually have in one place because I become just way too overwhelmed. It makes it really hard for me to decide what to wear and I'm not somebody who does like monthly trays. I kind of like to have all my perfumes at a glance. I like to look at them. I like to enjoy them. So it doesn't really work for me to have like a certain monthly tray. I just don't make use of them that way. I like to have all of them within easy reach. So the ones I'm gonna be sharing with you today are like I said, kind of my personal collection. I do have other perfumes that I'm either on the fence about or I haven't been reaching for enough or something like that that are just set aside. So if you have any questions about them, please feel free to let me know down below in the comments. And if this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia, and on this channel, we do talk a lot about perfumes. If that's something that you like, I would love if you would consider subscribing. Also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram. I do have my regular Instagram, which is my perfume Instagram and sort of like home decor lifestyle. And then I have another Instagram that I created, which is dedicated only to fitness and active wear because that is something else I'm really passionate about. So if that's something that you like as well, I would love if you would consider checking out that Instagram as well. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. All right, guys, so I'm going to start out today's video as almost a little bit of a vlog style, I guess. I haven't done this in a while, kind of like share with you some updates of some other things before we get into the perfumes. If you want to skip ahead to the perfume stuff, you're more than welcome to do that. But as you can see, I have quite a mess on my dresser, and it's because I have been receiving a whole bunch of active wear lately. Fitness is something that has been really important to me for a really long time. If you watch my channel, or if you follow me on Instagram, then you probably know that. But aside from being a nurse by profession, I also have been a personal trainer since almost 10 years ago now. And yeah, fitness is very, very important to me. And I really, like I've talked about before on my channel, I really let my fitness, not let it go, but I quit being as diligent with it and I quit being as careful with it. I was no longer watching what I was eating as carefully. I wasn't being consistent enough with my like routine at the gym. I would pretty much just do total body like two or three times a week, but I wasn't being very regimented or like specific with the body parts I was working. I basically just didn't take it as seriously. And I've really gotten back into that. And with that has come a renewal of excitement for active wear. <laughs> So I have been ordering from a whole bunch of activewear places. This stuff here that you see sitting in front of me is from a company called Women's Best. By the way, nothing is gifted. This is not sponsored. I'm in no way affiliated with them or any other fitness wear company at the moment. I would love to be, but I'm not at the moment. And um, if you follow my fitness Instagram, which I will put on the screen and I'll link down below for you, my fitness Instagram is where I share gym outfits of the day, meals, fitness motivation, my own kind of fitness journey, just my own fitness stuff, whatever I like um, to do with fitness. It's not everyone's cup of tea. That's why I made a separate Instagram account for it. But if you guys are interested in seeing like try on hauls or um, me reviewing like certain types of fitness wear, definitely head on over to that Instagram account and follow me there because that's where I share like photos of me actually wearing some of this stuff. And I have not only these, the reason they're sitting out is because I'm expecting a second shipment of this today. And then I also have like five or six other companies coming. I have Gymshark, Bowen T, Alphalete, Navigation, Vanquish, what else? Riderwear, did I say Riderwear? More from Women's Best. I have so much activewear coming, you guys. It is absolutely insane. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get everything, try everything on, review everything. And I will be making videos comparing and contrasting and like just doing different hauls and try-ons of all these companies. So hopefully that's something that you guys are into. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but you know, there's certain things I love. One of those things is perfume. Another of those things is fitness. So those are probably my two and fitness is the bigger of the two. If I'm honest, like fitness is more important to me than most other hobbies in my life <laughs> just because it makes you feel so good. I love feeling good about myself. I love looking cute when I go to the gym. I like feeling confident and strong and I like being passionate. Nothing feels as good as being fit. That's just the way it is in my opinion. So anyways, that's what all this mess is about. I just made myself a really nice cup of coffee. My nails are very plain today. They're just, I just did these myself at home 
just a little bit of hard gel and a little bit of just a top coat, something very simple. Um, I'll probably make them fancier in the next couple of weeks, but yeah, this is what we are working with today. And I'm just gonna have a sip of coffee and then we'll get into the perfumes. So as you guys can see, I still have pretty much the same layout of my room. I haven't really changed anything. There sits my gold perfume tray upon which I would like to eventually put my final perfumes that I've whittled down to and chosen for myself. So it just kind of sits there as a reminder that that is something I still want to do. Right now the perfumes are all still in my closet. My closet's gotten a little bit more compacted. Before we get into the perfumes, I'll just give you like a quick look of the closet. Um, just so you can see like how I store things. I still always get questions, even though I've done a million videos, I still always get questions about how I store things and whatever. So this is like an overview of my closet. <laughs> it houses all of my favorite things. <laughs> handbags, shoes, clothing, perfumes, activewear, everything is in here. I did, before we go into the perfumes, don't worry, we're gonna get to the perfumes, I promise. Um, so let's like try not to spoil it. So I did have to hang my activewear up in my closet. Um, again, you guys, if you're not interested in this, feel free to skip ahead, but I'm gonna share what I like. <laughs> so yeah, this is my activewear. I did have to hang it up because like I said, I started getting so much activewear and I've been getting so many new hauls and just really, really having fun exploring and trying on different types of activewear and feeling really good about it and just absolutely loving it. So I ended up having no more room in my dresser and I really like having activewear hung up because then I can clearly see what I have. I don't like when I open up my drawer and I literally cannot see everything that I have. I like to see everything at a glance. So this is all my current activewear. I've actually had um, a few requests to do like a full activewear collection video. I will do that, but I want to make sure that I have like um, all of my hauls that are coming in the mail. I want to make sure that I have those too before I jump into that. So a lot of this stuff still has tags on it because it's fairly new. Um, so I just have bras in the very front. So just a whole bunch of different bras. As you can tell, I have a type I really like. If I'm gonna be wearing just a single bra by itself, I want it to be a neutral bra, otherwise I prefer sets. And overall, I do prefer sets. I don't like mixing and matching tops and bottoms in different colors. I'm very matchy-matchy that way. I like everything to be monochromatic when I wear it. So I've got like bras by themselves here, and then I have all the sets hung up like so. That one's a little like out there. That one's from Victoria's Secret. Um, yeah, and I know, the funny thing is I know exactly where all these are from. I, I know exactly what sizes they are. <laughs> I have them like, I kind of chron, what's the word, chronological. I have them all organized in my head the same way I have my perfumes organized. I don't know how I do it, but I remember notes of every perfume and I remember every detail about activewear. It's the weirdest thing. But sometimes I can't even remember like my own phone number. It's bizarre. Yeah, more activewear. Anyway, I just have it organized into sets. And then in the very back, I have like long sleeve tops. And I really just prefer having them so that I can kind of see at a glance what there is. That way when I'm getting ready to go to the gym in the morning, it makes it very easy to choose. You guys know me, I am all about that organization. I like to have everything organized. I do not like a mess. And then on the right side is all of my like streetwear, dresses, whatever. And then I have handbags, shoes, etc. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the perfumes. I will pull this out of the closet so that we can go through it one by one and it'll make it a little bit easier. So I like the way it looks in the closet, but, and I really do, I like having the shelf. I think it looks nice having all the perfumes displayed, but I still have that part of me that wants to just finally just pick, you know, 15 of them and put them on a tray and then I can get rid of that shelf and have so much more room in my closet and it'll look a lot less cluttered. Um, yeah, so I feel like I'm getting dangerously close to it, you guys. Like I feel like the more time that passes and the more that I focus on other areas of my life that isn't just perfume, like my job, my relationships, my fitness, the more I do that, the more it gives me clarity as to like what perfumes are working for me because I realize what I actually reach for and gravitate toward. And it's good to take a step away too. It's good to take like some time and step away from your perfumes and then come back because you always have a renewed sense of 
clarity and like a different perspective. So anyway, without too much further ado, I'm going to pull that out of the closet and we will start going through the perfumes. Okay guys, so before we get into this, as usual, the same sort of disclaimers or rules or whatever apply, which is that if you don't see it on this shelf, it does not mean I have decluttered it. It does not mean I don't like it. It does not mean I've banned it from my collection. It just means that for the purposes of continually trying to uh, curate my collection. I always am very careful about what I keep out displayed and anything I'm not reaching for anything that I haven't been wearing goes away in a separate place and then I kind of come back and revisit it. So it means either I haven't reached for it or I'm struggling with it for some reason or I'm not sure about it or it's there's a note in there that's bothering me. There certainly will be a couple of perfumes not sitting here that I'm sure some of you guys will wonder what's bugging you about it or whatever, please feel free to leave um, questions down in the comment section. I will try my best to answer all of them. Also, you guys, feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram. Um, and over there, I like to talk to you guys a little bit more in my DMs and stuff like that. I find we have a lot of really good connections over there. So yeah, without too much further ado, let's jump into these bad boys. Now, this is going to be a very long video unless I try to make it short and sweet. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the perfumes and the notes. I'm just gonna give you like a quick blurb about each of them and tell you what the names are and stuff like that. And the other thing I was gonna say is that my perfect, like my ideal perfume collection is roughly probably 25, maybe 30 perfumes. And right now I think I have about 40. I think there's about 40 sitting here maybe 45 so it's not terrible um but you know whatever I don't know <laughs> I'm it's so hard to it's so hard to just make decisions and all of the ones that are sitting here honestly I really 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 like all the ones that are sitting here um there's very few that jump out at me as like it's bothering me or I'm not sure about it or I could get rid of it there's none sitting here maybe one that I'm like I don't wear that often but for the most part I like all the ones that are here and there's none that I would willingly just get rid of. So the chances of like when I'm ever going to actually cut it down to 20, I don't know when that's going to happen. This is like an ongoing thing, but okay. So why don't we start off with my travel sizes, roller balls and perfume sprays, which is in this little glass container, this little crystal container, which I just got from the dollar store. So we have black opium, illicit green, which was like my gateway into trying the illicit green. And I really like it. I think this would be good to have for a night out to throw in my handbag. We also have a little roller ball of Nest Madagascar Vanilla Perfume Oil, which this lasts forever, you guys. If you're wanting a vanilla that you can kind of layer with other things, this literally lasts forever. So I highly recommend that. It's very, very potent too. You don't need very much. This is a Viva La Juicy Gold Couture Roller Ball that was gifted to me by a friend, and it's one of my favorite perfumes, so I do really like that. We have Replica Coffee Break. I've used quite a bit of this. Um, I do really like this for the fall and the winter. I find it very relaxing and cozy. And I was wearing it to bed. And once I run out of this, there is a good chance I would like a full bottle because I do really like the way it smells. It's a very relaxing coffee and um, lavender fragrance. Then I have a couple of little baby Jo Malones. So this is Peony and Blush Suede. And if you guys watch my channel, you know that I got these little minis and then I loved the Peony and Blush Suede so much that I ended up getting a large bottle. So this I think is great because the Jo Malone's don't last a really, really long time. So this would be good to just throw in your handbag and keep with you. And I also have a little baby um, Wood Sage and Sea Salt. And again, I really, really like the way this smells but I did end up returning my large bottle of wood sage and sea salt because I don't know, I there was something stopping me from being like head over heels, I don't know. So I do still have the baby and I'm gonna still wear the baby and see if I change my mind at all or if I do decide after I'm through this if I want a large bottle, but I just wasn't like 100% sure of that one. So those are all my little miniatures and travel sprays. Okay, so starting in the back, we have Louis Vuitton Attrap Rev. Now this is a really beautiful fruity floral fragrance. I'm actually gonna zoom out, zoom out a little bit, that's too close. And the problem that's gonna make this video go so long is I wanna smell all of them as I'm going through them because I love doing that. Um, but this is a really beautiful fruity floral fragrance and it's very posh smelling. It's a very expensive like peony, lychee, there's some chocolate, there's some patchouli. It's just beautiful and I absolutely love it. And I bought that when I was on vacation last time and yeah, I really need to wear that one again. 
I have both of the Chanel Chanso Tendres. I have the EDT and the EDP because I love the way the EDT smells even more so than the EDP, but the EDP lasts a little bit longer. So I've decided for now at least, I'm probably gonna keep both and just layer them. Um, so these are really beautiful, like fresh shampoo scents. And then I also have peony and blush suede, like I said. I'm gonna take the cap off and smell this because I just love the way it smells. And this is, oh gosh, it's so good, you guys. It's so, so, so good. I love it so much. So that is a peony and apple and suede scent. It has like a very subtle leather touch to it, but it's not masculine and it's not animalic or dirty. It's a very subtle, classy, beautiful scent. We also have Clean Skin from Reserve, and this one is a really nice, like sweet, your skin but better kind of scent, and I absolutely love it. Lasts forever, gets me tons of compliments. We also have the Jo Malone Mimosa and Cardamom. Let me take the cap off of this one, actually. Yeah, Mimosa and Cardamom is just unbeatable. There's nothing quite like it. And so it has Mimosa. Oh, it has mimosa, obviously, cardamom, but there's also tonka bean. So it's kind of like a warm and yet fresh yellow floral scent, and it smells very expensive. And this also has actually very good lasting power and very good performance. Then we also have a Gabrielle Essence, or yeah, Gabrielle. I always call it the wrong thing. Ga Gabrielle Essence from Chanel. And this is a really uplifting, bubbly, like floral scent for the summertime. It's got lots of different flowers in it. Very classy, very elegant, really love it. I wouldn't mind this in a large size once this one runs out. Then we have a couple more Chanel's and a Byredo. So we have Chanel Chance Eau de Toilette. To be honest, you guys, this one I sometimes think about decluttering, which is really strange. And some people would be really shocked by that because this was my favorite Chanel of all time up until last summer basically when I discovered the Gabrielle and now the Gabrielle is like my favorite of all time. I still really like this. It is quite strong. I'm starting to, I'm starting to feel like sometimes I feel like it does smell a little bit on the dated side or maybe the patchouli is too strong for me, which is really weird. It's funny how your tastes change over time because this was like my be all end all. And now I'm kind of like, mm, sometimes literally sometimes I think about decluttering it, but I haven't yet because I don't want to make a rash decision and I do love that perfume a lot. Then beside that one we have Byredo Gypsy Water. This was the other one that I was kind of like hemming and hawing about. This was a repurchase though. This was one that I tried out, didn't think worked out for me, got it back. It's beautiful. The, the reason I hem and haw about it sometimes is because um, I do not wear it very often. I don't wear it very often, but my God, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I think that for those really hot summer days, this would be just perfect. Um, so yeah, I actually do really love gypsy water. And then we have Coco Mademoiselle, which is a soapy patchouli, orangey, tonka bean fragrance. And I honestly, I love this scent, you guys. I could not imagine not having Coco Mademoiselle. Um, I just think it's kind of a staple in every woman's collection. It's like sexy and fresh and appropriate for the office and it just works for everything. Not that I work in an office, but it just works for everything. So that is the top layer of perfume. So for the bottom row, uh, by the way, I have them kind of arranged in two categories. So the top row is like summer, like fresh, hot weather, grab and go kind of thing. And then the second one is more like a little bit more every day, anytime, anywhere. And this isn't like 100% perfect because I also wanted them to be balanced. The next one is date night and the next one is more like fall and winter. So these are more of like, I think, grab and go anywhere, anytime kind of perfumes, although sometimes they do cross over into other occasions. So in the very back, we have Olympia from Paco Rabanne. And this is a salty vanilla scent that I absolutely love. It's super sexy, boyfriend loves it. I still love that one so much. Beside that one, we have Ariana Grande, Thank You Next. And this one is really interesting because this is the one that kind of smells a little bit like dill pickles. I've had, I actually have a couple of like friends who are like, oh, I can't wear that. It smells too much like pickles. And I'm like, yeah, I know it totally does smell like pickles, but I think that's why I like it. Like there's something about it that is oddly addictive oddly addictive. And I did have this one set aside because I didn't think I was going to wear it. I wasn't wearing it enough. I pulled it back out because you guys, I enjoy this. Like, I don't really know what occasion it fits. I don't think it fits for like date night. It, it doesn't really fit for the gym. I don't wear it to go to bed. 
I don't really know when I would wear this. I just like wearing it. Um, so there's something about it that I find really addictive. And this has amazing performance, you guys. So it's like a sweet macaroon, I think coconut, I think orchid, something like that. And But there's something about it that is just like deliciously addictive. I don't know what it is but kind of a guilty pleasure if I'm honest, because I'm like, I'm literally in my thirties and whatever. <laughs> I let, you know, you like to wear what you like to wear. Beside that one in the back, we have the original Black Opium Eau de Parfum, and this one I really like. I find it a very easy grab and go, especially in the cooler months, and I just really like it. I'm one of those people that loves Black Opium. I love all the Black Opiums. I think they're all delicious. I actually did have like four or five different types of Black Opium, and I decluttered most of them, and the only one I kept is this one and the Illicit Green. They're my two, I think my two favorite at the moment. So that one I do find to be quite an easy grab and go. In the next row, I have my all-time favorite daytime scent for women, which is Miss Dior Eau de Parfum 2017. And I am trying to wear this one more often and use it up. I always tell you guys that because the juice is starting to turn a little bit dark. I do have backup bottles of this one. And beside that, we have Cloud. So this is a new one that you guys won't have seen in my collection. I have talked about it before and I have shown it before, but it wasn't my bottle, it was my daughter's bottle. And I have come full circle with this perfume. I actually really enjoy it now, whereas when it first came out or when I first smelled it, I did not like it. Um, but it just goes to show how much your taste can change over time. Yeah, I really enjoy the way this one smells. I do wish it had better performance. I just wish it had a bigger presence, basically, but I do really like the way that it smells. Like for example, it's actually quite weak compared to Thank You Next. Thank You Next is way stronger than Cloud, but I do really like the way that one smells. And beside that one, we have Valentino Donna Born in Roma. So this is a really sweet, um, kind of flirty, pretty, berry, vanilla, woody fragrance. Absolutely love it. Love the bottle. Um, you'll notice I don't have Valentino Donna, what is it called? Born in Roma Coral Fantasy. I took that one out because the dry down was reminding me of Adidas moves for her, which I wore when I was a teenager and I cannot stand it. So that one's no longer here and I probably will be getting rid of that one just because the dry down annoys me. In the front row we have Mon Guerlain from Guerlain and this is a beautiful lavender vanilla, one of my favorite scents of all time, always in my top tens. Um, I absolutely love wearing that one and I think it's appropriate for all occasions and all seasons. Beside that one we have Maison Francis Kirk John Baccarat Rouge. So this is a cult favorite, everybody knows about this one, so many people have it. This is another one I have really had my ups and downs with. Didn't like it, started to like it, thought I really liked it, decided I didn't need it, missed it. <laughs> um, I have been through a lot with this perfume, but now that I have it back, you know, I'm actually really, really enjoying this one and I'm really happy that I have it. And I've actually been making an effort to wear it as well. I don't know if you can see, but there is a small dent. I have been trying to wear that one. And yeah, it just smells like rich, sophisticated, luxurious, um, kind of like burnt sugar, but an expensive burnt sugar cotton candy kind of vibe, but also very woody. Let me just take the cap off. Also very woody and very natural. Oh, it's just, it's just so interesting and good. And you know, I think part of the problem when it comes to perfumes is that had I discovered that one on my own, I probably would have fallen in love with it right away. But because I got that one on the advice of the whole internet basically saying it was the greatest thing in the world, it was like so much buildup that by the time I got it, I was like very underwhelmed. But I think had I discovered it on my own at a counter to begin with, I would have had a completely different experience with it. So anyway, that's Baccarat Rouge. Happy to have that one. Beside that one is another that I find to be a very easy grab and go. This is Poison Girl Eau de Parfum. You can see I have a pretty good dent going in this bottle, you guys. It's like, I would say 80% there, 75% there. This one, I just really enjoy. It's sweet, it's girly, it's likable. Um, it's kind of like Mon Guerlain in a sense. They're just, they're easy to wear. They never disappoint. Um, it doesn't have crazy, crazy performance, but it's not bad. And I just enjoy it. So I find that one to be like just an easy reach. <laughs> what are you doing, kitty? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, so coming over to my date night section, these are perfumes that I pretty much specifically dedicate just for date night. 
I would not wear these really any other time except for one or two. So we'll go through them. So in the very back, we have the original Good Girl. So this one, you guys, is another one that has been kind of interesting for me. For the longest time, I did not like the original Good Girl, and I really preferred the Legere and the Supreme and pretty much all the flankers, except the original. I thought there was something about the original that really bothered me, just wasn't my cup of tea. However, it's funny how perspective will change the way you think about a scent, isn't it? So what happened was I smelt this on a girl who worked at Sephora, and I didn't know what she was wearing, and I asked her, and she said she was wearing this one, and I was like, you know, maybe it smells better when you actually wear it than when you spray it on paper or when you first get that initial spray. So I kind of thought I should give it another chance. And then I also heard a couple of people describe this perfume as being quote unquote their secret weapon. And literally just smelling it on somebody else and then hearing people call it their secret weapon, it completely changed my perspective on this perfume. And I was like, okay, I need to give this a chance because maybe it's gonna smell better on me than I think it will. And maybe it will prove to be one of those perfumes that just I really enjoy wearing. So I decided I needed to give it a chance. You guys, I'm actually not minding it. I can't say I'm head over heels for it. It still isn't like an intense love for me or anything, but I am coming around to the original Good Girl and I am enjoying it a little bit more than I ever have. <laughs> so this is the only one that's currently out on my tray and I am still kind of experimenting with it and I really can't tell you like a full, review on it or anything because I just haven't worn it enough to really give you like a full idea but I am still experimenting with this one. I do find it very sexy and the only thing I would say is it actually doesn't last as long as I had hoped it would for the potency. Like you know how it's very potent? It doesn't last a crazy amount of time for how potent it is. So beside that one in the very middle in the back we have the Armani Code Satin. This one, oh, I love this one you guys. This is discontinued. This is a really um like gourmand, velvety, sweet. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. It's so sexy too, you guys. It smells very similar to the original um, Armani Code, but this one is more deeper, richer, darker, and has a, I think, praline note in it. And it's just so, so sexy. Like Armani just knows how to do, it is hard to get the lid on. Armani knows how to do good perfumes you guys they know how to do good fragrances i just i love this so much and i can't believe they discontinued it i'm obsessed so that is one that i really really enjoy wearing for date nights and i have two backup bottles and then beside that one on the other side we have luby rouge from christian louboutin and this one is an iris cardamom and vanilla fragrance and i absolutely love this i don't have to say too much about it because i've talked about it at length but it's one of my favorite 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 perfumes of all time it's very feminine it's very feminine, it's very sexy, it's very alluring, it's very unique, and I just really enjoy it. And then in the next row, we have Gold Couture from Viva La Juicy, or Juicy Couture. Again, one of my favorite perfumes, my boyfriend's favorite on me to wear for date night. It's sexy, it's caramel, it's flirty, it's fun, it's sweet. Um, there's nothing quite like it, I just absolutely love it. And then beside that, we have another one that is very edible and delicious. And this is the Brazilian Crush Chirosa 62. This is pistachio and salted caramel. There's also, I think, oh, it's focusing on the wrong perfume. There's also, I think, vanilla and I can't remember what all the other notes are in here. It's just like a nutty, delicious, like caramelly, irresistible scent. I love it, you guys. I absolutely love it. My biggest tip that I always tell people is get the Boom Boom Cream and the Coco Cabana Cream and mix them together. Mix them together. Trust me, you will thank me later. Just get the two of them and mix them together. It's amazing. So that one I really like for date night because even though it's kind of like a beachy, summery scent, I, I just think it works really well for date nights. My boyfriend loves it. So this is Victor and Raw Flower Bomb. Absolutely love Flower Bomb. I don't have to say too much about that one. It's just a very sweet um, floral tea fragrance and has really good performance. One of my top, top favorites ever for life. Beside that one, we have Versace Crystal Noir. This is the Eau de Toilette. I do prefer the Eau de Toilette over the Eau de Parfum because even though, I mean, I don't actually notice a problem with longevity. I haven't really tested the longevity of, of them side by side, but this is just a beautiful, interesting, floral, kind of coconutty fragrance. It's like a dark, 
It smells so good. It smells like a vampire on the beach. It's like dark and sexy and alluring and interesting. And my boyfriend absolutely loves it. Haven't had enough opportunity to wear this one. I really need to wear this one more often. And that's one that I think you could wear kind of all year round. I don't think it has to be just for nighttime or like date night, but I kind of put it in that category because I just think it works really well for that category. So, and really beautiful bottle as well. And then beside that one, we have Alien from Mugler. So Amber, Jasmine, Woody Notes, super bold, super sexy. And I also like to wear that one in the summertime though. Like I said, some of these kind of go for other occasions. I would wear this one in the summertime and I would also wear Luby Rouge just for like day to day. It doesn't have to just be date night, but the rest of them, I think the reason I keep Victor and Roth Flower Bomb mostly for date nights, even though this is such a versatile scent and you could totally wear it as a signature scent, you could wear it all the time, is because this is the scent I was wearing when I met my boyfriend, I always tell you guys. And so it just has like date night vibes for me. So that's why I wear it for date nights, but you could definitely wear any of these anytime you really wanted to. Okay, and coming to our bottom row, these are ones that a couple of them, I guess, don't really need to be just in the bottom row. A couple of them are kind of like wear anytime anywhere, but most of them are ones that I only would wear in the fall and the winter. So starting in the very back, we have Diptyque Eau de Well, and this is the Eau de Toilette version, and I absolutely love it. This is a woody vanilla fragrance. It's very resinous. I think there's papyrus in here and a couple of other, um, oh my God, it's so good. Oh, this is so beautiful, you guys. Actually, this you could wear in the summertime as well. There is like a lightness to it. There's a freshness. It smells like, I always tell you guys, it smells like an enchanted forest that has like a cloud of vanilla over top of it. It's just, it is absolutely beautiful. So beautiful. I love this. Love the bottle. Love everything about it. I'm sitting on a pillow right now, you guys, because my floor is really hard. Um, so yeah, 10 out of 10 recommend this one. And yeah, I think this one is more of a wear anywhere, anytime, but probably the best time to wear it, I think is in the spring and the fall. It just has that natural quality about it. That reminds me of like the trees and the leaves and freshness and spring and like it just rained in the forest or something. Beside that one, we have Spiritus Double Vinny. And this one again, probably could be in any category. Could even put it in the date night category. Although, you know what's funny? I've asked my boyfriend what he thinks about this one. He didn't go crazy for it. So many people hype, hype, hype this up. Um, one channel in particular, I remember them saying, this is like the best date night perfume will drive the guys wild, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I, yeah, that hasn't been my experience. I really like this one for me. I just like the smell of it. It's a sweet vanilla. Let me actually just take the cap off here. It's a sweet vanilla. It's beautiful. One of the nicest vanillas that I have for sure. Although I don't think my favorite vanilla, I'll tell you my favorite vanilla, but it is very good, has very good lo longevity and it smells just, it just smells amazing. I mean, I think you could just wear this anytime, anywhere. You wouldn't have to leave it just specifically for winter, but I tend to wear it more in the fall and the winter. Also, it's very expensive, so I, I don't wanna just use it up. I wanna use it for like the right occasion. And then beside that one, we have a discontinued one, which makes me really sad. This is Contremois from Louis Vuitton. This is like an herbal, vanilla, powdery, kind of musky fragrance. So it has like some green notes in it. It has two or three different types of vanilla. It has cocoa powder, I think. Um, let me take the cap off again. It's so stinking beautiful. I don't know why they discontinued this one. I mean, Louis Vuitton has some beautiful fragrances, you guys. I actually think all of their perfumes are beautiful. Very expensive smelling, very rich and luxurious smelling. I wouldn't mind trying them out again and checking out the other ones that they have, but I just don't understand why they would have wanted to discontinue this particular one. Is it because it wasn't a good seller? Is it because it was too... Like this is a little bit more mainstream, I would say. This smells a little bit more mainstream compared to some of their other scents, so I don't know why. I don't know, but it's gorgeous, and I don't know why they would have discontinued it, but I'm happy that I have a large bottle, um, but it does break my heart that once this is gone, I won't be able to find it again, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of annoyed because I don't like to fall in love with something that I can't get again, but I don't want to, I'm not going to give this one up because I just love it that much. So in the next row, we have two of my favorite perfumes, I think, 
out of my whole collection, two of my absolute favorite for sure. Um, so this is Armani C Intense, and you guys know about this one, you know how I feel about it if you watch my channel. This smells very similar to the original Armani C. It does smell very similar, but this one is deeper and more like resinous and kind of has like a woody component almost. It has like an ambery touch to it. It's sweet and there's benzoin, it's sexy, it's mature, it's alluring, it's sophisticated. I love this so much, you guys. This would be such a perfect perfume to wear for a really nice date night. Um, so I really like that one. One of my favorites, but I think it is more appropriate for fall and winter. That's why it's kind of sitting here. Beside that one is my reigning favorite vanilla champion, which is Kaoli Vanilla 28. So this is actually like a brown sugar orchid fragrance. Oh, it's just so, so delicious, you guys. So the main star of the show here is brown sugar and vanilla orchid. Those two notes together. And I think vanilla orchid is like a fake note. Like I don't think there actually exists a vanilla orchid flower, obviously. I think that one is like created in a lab. But anytime there's an orchid note or a vanilla orchid note in a perfume, it usually is a favorite for me. So, 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 so good, you guys. Like I need to wear this more often. Truth be told, I need to wear all my perfumes more often. I don't wear any of them often enough to even justify having a perfume channel. I just, I don't know. I'm not one of these people who wears perfume every day, which is kind of weird for somebody who loves them so much and talks about them all the time. I don't wear perfume every day, but anyway, this one I really like for the fall and the winter as opposed to the summer. Although again, that's another one that you could wear for date night. You could wear it anytime signature scent. I just think that if I'm going to categorize it, it's probably the best for the fall and the winter. And then in the front row, we have three more fragrances. So on the left is my black opium, illicit green. This is my new favorite black opium. This has a note of fig and there's also, I think mandarin orange. So this one is, um, a little bit greener, creamier and fresher and fruitier than the original black opium. And I really like it. And again, this one you could wear in the fall and the winter because it does have a richness and a sweetness and a depth. You could wear it for date night because it is sexy. But again, you could also wear it anytime, anywhere because it does have that freshness and that like greenness from the fig that's in there. And it's beautiful and I absolutely love it. And then beside that, we have Mongerlan Intense. So this is just a more intense version of the original, but this one is a little sweeter and like, more vanilla and more sexy. The original, the original Mongerlan is more like everyday appropriate. This one's a little bit more sexy nighttime appropriate. And obviously you can see, I love it. I've worn it a lot. And beside that one, we have Valentino Donna Eau de Parfum, just the original. And this is a beautiful lipsticky rose leather scent. So there's, I think Iris, Rose, I think vanilla, and I think suede. I can't really smell it because there's no cap. Um, but Valentino is incredible. Valentino just knows how to do beautiful, beautiful scents. And this is a very mature, ladylike, pretty, elegant scent. And I really, really enjoy it. Again, it's an easy reach, especially for, I think, the fall and the winter. It's going to be a very easy reach. Lasts for a long time in your clothing, not so much on your skin. But I really, really enjoy that one. So that was kind of a quick rundown of my current sort of personal collection. And again, I like to call it my personal collection because I do have other perfumes. I have a lot more perfumes than this, probably probably two or three times this many, but they're away in boxes because they're already dedicated to a declutter bin or I'm kind of like, I haven't been reaching for them. I just don't reach for them often enough. So they're just not sitting out here. Um, yeah, so please don't be shocked. There are a couple of perfumes that I'm on the fence about. One of them is Oriana from Parfum de Marly. I am starting to realize that I don't love a lot of Neroli and Orange Blossom together. So that's the reason that one is not sitting here. It's a gorgeous perfume, but I'm just kind of starting to realize that the Orange Blossom Neroli thing is not my favorite. Um, so yeah, so that is my sort of updated perfume collection. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. So that's it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this sort of little vloggish style perfume collection video. And I'm looking forward to talking to all of you down below in the comments. And I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.